Mayo Mountain is a colossal ski resort, the largest in Colorado, with a reputation of excellence to match. It has over 5,300 acres, 195 named runs, and a ski town oozing charm straight out of Europe. This epic pass destination is the most visited ski resort in North America. While some complain of the development and overcrowding, the snow and diverse terrain keeps everyone coming back for more. Vail is famous for its back bowls, which are 70% of the total terrain. If you're only riding on the front side, you're missing out on most of the resort. The bowls keep going and going, where intrepid riders are rewarded with champagne glades and a cornice jump to Potter Nirvana. When the snow's plentiful and the crowds are slim, Vail truly is like nothing on earth. It's so incredibly vast that you're always going to be able to find a good little patch of snow and good terrain that has great snow conditions. You just have to know where to look. Vail Mountain is a two and a half hour drive from Denver International Airport or 35 minutes drive from regional Eagle Vale Airport. Driving times can vary significantly with weather and traffic. The Vail Back Bowls, the reason you're here. They are legend, wait for it, as we first explore the front side of the mountain. Vail Village, Lion's Head, and Smaller Cascade are the base villages connected by the free bus service. Expect to pay $50 per day for garage parking. Gondola 1 rides to Midvale with access to beginner and intermediate runs off Mountaintop, Wildwood, and Avanti Express. Avanti and Golden Peak are the two terrain parks. Further up Golden Peak is the advanced terrain of Chair 10 and Northwoods Bowl. From Lion's Head, the Eagle Bond Gondola drops you off at beginner and intermediate terrain with access to Game Creek Bowl with something for all levels of riders. From Vale Village, Gondola 1 has heated seats and Wi-Fi luxury straight up to Midvale. The front side has several great areas, but is mostly beginner and intermediate runs. Runs include family-friendly safe zones and slow areas. The lifts are easy to use and include maps for navigation. Avanti has groomed cruisers and small terrain park features perfect for intermediate riders. For freestyle fiends, Golden Peak on the front is home to the Burton US Open Terrain Park. Take a few laps where the snowboarding greats have ridden, including the superpipe. If there is a lot of snow, avalanche mitigation work might delay the opening of the back bowls and there are several areas on the front worth lapping. There are challenging areas like Northwoods Bowl Steeps, Chair 10 Glades, and natural halfpipe gullies like Hairbag Alley. Glades at Vale are mostly well-spaced pine trees, but there are several tranquil aspen tree sections on the lower mountains. Regulars know not to dawdle on the front side. Go straight to the back bowls once they open and before they get skied off. You can always play on the front side at the end of the day. If you're starting from Lion's Head Village, hop on the Eagle Bon Gondola for easy and intermediate runs top to bottom. This is the fastest way to Game Creek Bowl as well. Game Creek is the easiest bowl and has long groomed cruisers and powder stashes in the trees. It's another great area to ride before the back bowls open with easy access to Sun Up Bowl. Dairy, legendary. Most people enter the back bowls at the sign atop Sun Up Bowl. Vail back bowls have four express lifts and two platter lifts serving the terrain. There are a few intermediate runs, but most of the terrain is expert black and double black diamond runs. The sheer acreage of the back bowls is overwhelming. Riders on the other side of a bowl look like tiny ants. Right after a storm, everything is a free-for-all and easy to access runs are quickly skied off. If there is no new snow, the southern aspects can be quite crunchy in the morning, so check the grooming report for the best routes. Never go down the ungroomed runs. All the runs funnel down to cat tracks eventually, and it pays to wax your board to avoid getting stuck on the flats. Without new snow, the search for powder stashes is on. The far edge of Sundown Bowl, after a short boot pack to the top of Ptarmigan Ridge, is an excellent area. It drops into a wide open ridge line before heading into Aspen Trees and down to the High Noon Express. The other side of Sundown Bowl and Sunup Bowl are quickly skied off and usually icy and crunchy. China Bowl has everything from groomed intermediate runs of the poppy fields to some of the steepest open terrain with cliff jumps through the dragon's teeth. At the top of Orient Express, it's worth taking the cat track road down to the Shangri-La Glades along the ridge line between China Bowl and Siberia Bowl. The snow drifts through the wide spaced trees, creating natural jumps as you wind down through the glades to Orient Express lift. To access the Far Mongolia Bowls, continue on the cat track across the top of Siberia Bowl. The surface Pama lift follows a gentle slope and is easy to use. The best way to ride Mongolia is to follow a ridge line halfway down, then angle back toward the exit to avoid the long cat track at the bottom. The cat track can be very slow going for snowboarders and not worth the hike out. Siberia Bowl is the farthest over I would go in deep snow. After exploring the backside, ride down the road, across the two bridges to Skyline Express, 
and up to Blue Sky Basin. Blue Sky Basin is where we spend most of our time at Vale because we love glades and always find the best snow here. Blue Sky Basin is the most remote area, with Skyline Express to Bell's Camp and lift access to the gladed terrain of Earl's Bowl and Peeth's Bowl. At the top of Blue Sky is Bell's Camp. There are restrooms and a cabin with fireplace, tables, and food for purchase. Outside are picnic tables and grills, pack food to cook, and some refreshing drinks for the full experience. Champagne Glade is powder bliss with the perfect number of playful moguls and pine trees and looping lines through them. We could ride here all day, but it does get skied off. Under the skyline lift is Lover's Leap. The wind blows snow over the ridgeline to form a nice cornice and drops powder into the bowl and trees below. The fear factor and sight of boulders keeps many less experienced riders out. The trees can be tight, but there are plenty of paths to explore. Nearby Steep and Deep has the steeps, boulders, and trees all in one. At the bottom, hop on Pete's Express to more glades. The top area is fairly open with drifts, but the trees tighten further down. If you're up for the challenge, you're likely to weave through untouched snow. At the top of many of the lifts are restaurants like Two Elk Lodge, where you can grab a bowl of chili and warm in the large seating area. There are also more casual restaurants and indoor cafeterias like Eagle's Nest and Buffalo's Grill, or upscale dining at the 10th. Getting back at the end of the day can be a maze. Eventually, you'll get back to one of the base villages where there are endless opera specials. Thanks for joining us here at Vale exploring all the different bowls here, the back bowls, Blue Sky Basin, all the legendary terrain that Vale is known for. I'm Jennifer and this is Jeff, we're with Snowboard Traveler and we'll see you at the next mountain.